What's up, everyone? I am Tim Oates on bass, and the bitter truth is I've never been much of an Evanescence fan, but I'm still going to review the new album. Okay, let me explain. It's not that I dislike Evanescence. I just never really got into them like a lot of people. And I know, like, Amy Lee's an amazing singer. I have a lot of respect for her. The band's really good. You know, when they first came out, they had Bring Me Back to Life. Everyone knew that song. It was just a huge hit. And, like, that song was it was good, right? But what I found is when I started digging into the catalog more and listening to, the, uh, to that particular album more, I just often felt like they were overproduced. Now, of course, this was almost 20 years ago. A lot has changed. I figure now is probably a good time to check out the new album. Maybe I've grown as a person, grown as a musician, grown as a listener. Who knows? We'll see. But I am excited to dig in. I have not heard anything off this album. When you see the title cards, that's your chance to pause, listen to the track with me. When you're done, unpause, and I'll tell you my thoughts. It's like we're reviewing it together. Except I'm the only one talking because it's a video. But you get that. All right, let's 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 get right to it. The album's The Bitter Truth. Uh, the first track is Artifact The Turn. Or it's like Artifact Slash The Turn. Okay, Artifact The Turn. So, yeah, it was definitely an intro track. Um, but done differently than I'm used to seeing intro tracks. So it opened up with uh, synths and there was some really cool panning work. And then shortly thereafter, Amy Lee came in um, with some amazing harmonies. No surprise there. Like she is just a fantastic singer. So the harmonies were really cool. The synth work was cool. And then it felt like it kind of slowed down and almost stopped and then like another track started what i'm taking artifact slash the turn to be is the first part's artifact the second part's the turn and it's kind of like two ideas that amy lee was playing with this one very clearly is meant to just go right into the next track broken pieces shine which we're gonna dive into right now So I had a hard time paying attention to the song because the uh, the mix felt really weird to me. The guitars seemed really low, especially in the beginning. It did get a little bit better through later in the song, but not much. I mean, it was it felt like it was really drum forward, drum and synth forward. Occasionally, you'd get some some bass coming through. But the vocals also felt buried in the mix. And when you have a singer like Amy Lee, you wouldn't think you would bury the vocals, at least not for the whole song. Like maybe for specific parts, you would bury the vocals in the mix to create an effect, give it more punch when the vocals become clear during specific sections. I mean, there's there's different techniques for doing that, but I had a hard time focusing on Amy Lee at all because the mix was throwing me off that much. Let's check out the next one because my curiosity is peaked, although maybe not for the right reasons. Um, this is The Game Is Over. Okay, The Game Is Over. So, that one with the mix was much better. I don't know what was happening with that other song. I will say, like, I kind of wasn't paying too much attention during the first verse because I was paying attention to the mix because it started with drums again. And I was like, oh no. Oh no, not again. <laughs> Quickly thereafter, the bass came in and you could really hear the bass was much more pronounced. The vocals right there with it. Uh, you could hear the vocals much better in the mix. And and then as soon as the guitars came in, it was like, okay, this this sounds more like a mix I would I would think I would hear from a band like Evanescence. So um, once I realized that the the mix was good and like I could actually enjoy the song, I thought it was really well done. Really, uh, really impressed. And I did not think it was overproduced yet. So maybe I've matured a little bit since 20 years ago. We'll see. Uh, there's still... Um, nine more songs to go, so. We should probably get in the next one, which is, yeah, right. My immediate thought was, is this synth pop? Apparently that's just how the verses go, is very synth heavy. I will say the chorus helped, you know, it's got some really good vocals, catchy. I appreciated there was a solo in the song. Did not 
particularly like the ending. It's interesting because there's there's parts of the song that I liked, parts that I didn't, but I think ultimately the the verses I disliked enough that it's just like, nah, this is not for me. Uh, I'm sure there's others out there that will like the the way the verses are. It just I, I could see if you were into that, digging it. So, you know, nothing but love there. Uh, just not for me. But let's see if uh, Feeding the Dark is more my style. That was a really good song. I really enjoyed that. When the build started very early in the song, I was like, yes, ma'am, I'll take more of this all day. Um, the verse really dug that. Just a lot of drive, great groove. Uh, chorus was nice and big, kept the energy up of the verse, uh, elevated it, and then the bridge continued that trend and actually used some nice like motif play of pulling back in some of the musical themes from the previous um, sections to really kind of tie it together. The only criticism I have of this song is the second half of the bridge felt a little empty, almost unnecessary. It's my only criticism, um, but all in all, I thought the song was great. All right, next song is Wasted On You. What a good, good, I, I can't say good enough. What an amazing song. Wow, so I like, I've got notes. I'm scrapping all of that. I'm scrapping all of my notes because it's just that good of a song. You, it's, it's just, beautifully done it's got an amazing build throughout the song by the end it's just got a ton of energy there's so much emotion in the lyrics i, I did take a peek at the lyrics um it's um it seems pretty clear that it's it's about a breakup i'm guessing a divorce because there's just a lot of pain the video was a great compliment to the um to the song you can kind of tell it was like a pandemic video. It looks like it was kind of all shot at home. Like it was still well done. It looked great. There's a certain amount of intimacy of like letting the world see you at home that played in so well with how emotional and raw this, the song is and the lyrics. So I can't say enough good things about this song. It's just fantastic. I almost don't even want to listen to the next song. I want to end there. I mean, it's just that good, but I still got six more to go. The next one is Better Without You. Okay, that was another great song. Um, what was that? It was Better Without You. So good. And, and it plays in the album perfectly. If the last song, Wasted On You, was the breakup song, this is the other side of that, of finding your power again, finding your voice. I mean, it just really like a lot of like drive and, and the way the music was arranged and of course the way the, the vocals were arranged, it just gave you that exact feeling. The way that the music was written, it did a really, really good job of keeping up the right amount of tension through the verses. And then the chorus gives you the release where all of a sudden it's like, okay, I found the power. And the, and the way the vocals kind of elevate it, it pulls it together. The vocals in the bridge might be my favorite vocals so far on the album. And there's some amazing vocals. All right, let's check out the next song, which is Use My Voice. There's a lot of music videos on this album. Like this is the third official music video and there was an official lyric video. I haven't even been mentioning all of them it just feels like a lot. So anyway, sorry, just a random observation. All right, uh, use my voice. Okay, now it makes sense. So this song, I, I actually completely forgot about, but this was the political song that they did last year before the election. And so I'm not gonna get into politics. I thought it sounded kind of familiar, but then I saw a shot of the White House and I'm like, the White House? Oh, wait a minute. And then I looked at the date and it said like August of last year. And I was like, okay, this was the political song. I remember it was on the news. The song is really well done. It's very much an anthem song. I do think it stands out a little bit because Evanescence doesn't really do those types of songs, right? Like you hear Rage do a political song or System do a political song. And you're like, 
whatever. Like, that's what they do. You hear a band that doesn't do political songs do one, and it definitely stands out. It's a good song. It's it's just different. Um, okay, let's get to the next one, which is Take Cover. Oh, I'm so mixed on this one. <laughs> it's... Okay, so it starts out with uh, drum and bass work. I thought the bass work up front was really good. I mean, the, the, the combination of the drums and bass in the verse is really good, but the bass, I was just like, oh, this is fantastic bass work. So love that. And, and then the chorus hit, and I was like, man, this is weird. Normally, with Evanescence, even the songs I'm not a fan of, like the chorus is usually one of the strongest parts. Like the the chorus has the hooks and the chorus is the part where it's like, okay, that part's pretty good, but the other parts are not so much. But in this one, I was kind of meh on the on the chorus. I thought the verses were great. And then the bridge came in and the bass work got even better. And then the second half of the bridge came in and it was just fire. And then that chorus ended it out and I was like, oh, <laughs> so... There was so much about the song that I liked, except the chorus, and unfortunately the chorus is the part that's played the most, because it's a chorus. I really want to like this song as a whole, but I think it's just, I'm going to really dig parts of it, and I'm going to be like, this is a great, like, bass song. Like, I kind of want to go learn the bass line. Let's get to the next one, which is Far From Heaven. Uh, so that was a ballad. Very emotional song, piano forward. It's a really good song. I can recognize it's an amazing song, right? And it's going to speak to a lot of people, but it just didn't speak to me. There are other songs on this album that completely pulled me in, that blew me away. And the thing is, is those songs may not connect with other people. This one just does that with me, and that's okay. Like, everyone has different songs they connect with, and... If you talk to people about music, you'll hear that. You'll hear people bring up a song and like that's the soundtrack of their life or that song got them through something. Okay, let's check out the next one, which is Part of Me. So Part of Me, really good song. Uh, had a nice driving energy throughout. Um, great backing vocals during the verses kind of haunting, really, really helps set the mood of the song. The chorus melody sounded familiar. I couldn't put my finger on it though. If you have any idea what I might be talking about, if you heard the same thing, let me know in the comments because it just had, it reminded me of, of a something, like a very common vocal line or, or well-known vocal line or something. I'm not sure what it is, but anyway, if you have an idea, let me know. All right, what the last... Last song. This is Blind Belief. That was a great way to end the album. Really ended on a high note. It's a good song. Uh, I will say that, you know, it. I felt like I was listening to an Evanescent song. I mean, not that the other songs didn't sound like an Evanescent song, but something about this one, I was like, yeah, this feels more like a signature sound. Anyway, Great song, um, really, really great way to end the album. Uh, the guitar work in the chorus I thought was really cool. In fact, the second half of the chorus, they uh, they do these chords that kind of walk down. I thought that was that was dope. I, I was a big fan of that. So, yeah. So that's that's the album. You know, I gotta say I thought it was really good. I know that there's a couple songs that I wasn't feeling. There's a couple parts that didn't speak to me and some weird stuff but you know when I think about the album as a whole it's uh it's really good The Bitter Truth by Evanescence I I dig it I think think I could become an Evanescence fan who who knows like a, like a real fan not like a you know well that one song is kind of cool and oh yeah they also did that song like that's kind of cool like because that's really where I was before but um yeah check it out uh, also check out the rest of my channel, uh, like the video, subscribe, you know, the U YouTube stuff, YouTube stuff all around, you know it, you, you do YouTube stuff all the time, I know you do. Alright, check out the album, do the YouTube stuff, you keep making beautiful music, and I will see you in the next one.